I'm Sarah Ernie, and I'm a data scientist. We're here at San Francisco's Pier 15 at the Exploratorium. Let's go learn some science. I'm here today to help make science more accessible to you, because after all, we're all scientists at heart, and we all have questions. We have scary movies about artificial intelligence telling us that robots are gonna take over the world, and the likes of Elon Musk telling us that we should regulate it but we still have AI entering our lives every day. We have it recommending what we should purchase. We have in our homes robots that answer questions when we ask Alexa, Siri, or OK Google a certain question. And we also have them driving our cars. So in spite of all those fears, we have it coming in. There are actually examples dating quite a while back about artificial intelligence being extremely helpful in our lives. With the advent of artificial intelligence, we were actually able to digitize books by scanning those images and then translating them to text that could then be put into a computer and then printed as many times as we wanted. So let's think about what's required in order to take a printed piece of paper and turning it into a digital representation that we have as a document in our machine. To start out, we actually have to capture an image. So a digital representation of something like a number actually turns out to just be a set of pixels in a matrix. So if we take this example of a Lego piece, you can think of each of these individual spots as a pixel. You see here the number seven, the gray is the background or the paper, and the green would be the ink that has the number seven on it. What we can see now are the differences in those two that make it obvious that at each pixel, whether or not we captured some ink, or just the paper background. What we can do is we can make up a bunch of rules possibly that, well, there are two vertical lines and one horizontal line that represent the number seven. But in reality, we don't know if we're gonna always capture the number seven exactly like this. It could have been written completely differently in a way that humans can easily interpret it as the number seven. But now any rule that you might have made about vertical and horizontal lines is actually no longer there. Now we would have to represent it by two horizontal and one diagonal line. So if that weren't hard enough, if we didn't have to feed it a lot of examples of how different the number seven were, there are actually also issues of introducing whole other numbers. So the number four also has vertical lines and horizontal lines, actually the same count as that number seven that we first showed you. The problem is we have a lot of different ways that we can represent these numbers. Luckily, a lot of really clever people came up with ways to try and get these problems solved by having humans participate in the process of cleaning up these numbers. It's actually called CAPTCHA, and you might have used it quite a lot when you're logging in on websites or signing up for some new password in email. Turns out every time that you see one of those funny looking numbers or words that have maybe a line through them or are slightly distorted, maybe have some color background, those are examples of digital images that could not be translated into some text by a machine. And what they're asking is for you to prove, number one, that you're not a robot, since you should be able to solve this problem. And number two, to help clean up the internet for us. I'm Sarah Ernie, and that's today's Science and Tech, reminding you that science is all about discovery. So go out and discover. Mm -hmm.